when running intersection, I was seeing collision zero millimeters. Correct. Because it's probably easier to describe but shouldn't, with a shouldn't, diagram. It's a bit confusing when you check for intersection and you see collision. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but that's the best we can do. So let's say you have two objects. You've got a cube here and you've got a cube there. This is an intersection, right? Yes, uh, clearly. This, this cube is going inside that cube. Now, the question is, is that what's the distance of this intersection? You know, what's the... So let me just change it like that. So if I drew it like this, the distance would be logically that distance here, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you know as a human by glancing at that, that that is the distance. But how is the computer going to know that's the distance? Equally well, this could be the distance, right? Yeah. But we know that this is the more meaningful distance. Mm -hmm. So one way to look, and, and of course, another possible distance is this distance. So really, the one way to describe the meaningful distance of an intersection is the smallest distance you need to move one of the shapes in order to no longer have an intersection and this is the shortest possible distance mm -hmm. uh, and that's how we get a distance for an intersection then another issue is that what if we have we don't have two boxes but we have a box and we have a plane like a, a site topography or a tree or a, or one of those 2d people what's the intersection distance of this there's no answer because this one works because we know this is inside the box but this has no inside or outside is that inside is that outside nobody knows so the best we can do mathematically is say that there is one collision there and one collision here so therefore, by definition, a collision cannot have any distance measurement. It will always be a zero millimeter thing. Mm, so that's why we see collision when we are checking intersection. Correct. So if you do an intersection, the first thing we check is what type of shape is it? Is it a box shape? You know, something which actually has an inside and an outside? Or a 2D thing, you know, just a flat plane like that tree you have? You know, when you have a tree, that's 2D. You're not going to know whether it's inside or outside. So, therefore, if you have one of these types of shapes, the best scenario we can do is give you collision results. I understand. Okay, makes sense. Now, you can go back and go quickly through intersection, then collision, then the other one, the clearance. So, you can see here are two trees. So, of course, they are collisions. You know, all of these are collisions. Uh, all of these collisions. I think they're sorted right now. So they Yeah, because sort we can see it. You see the text message in the middle. Collision zero. Yeah, yeah but what I'm saying is that you, now you understand why it's a collision and it's impossible mm -hmm. for us to know. Mm -hmm. It's just a point, you know, that, that yeah, touches yeah. it at that point And what do we know? Yeah. Uh, Let me ask you one thing. Wouldn't it be possible to add a button here? Like when I'm setting, uh, checking for intersection, I want to have a checkbox to don't see any collision. I don't care about collision. I'm just checking the... the yeah, yeah. Intersection. Yeah, we can we can do all that. It just hasn't been built, obviously. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, yeah, we need to do that. And so this is intersection. This is a collision. Now there is a another scenario. So let's say we can have our two boxes, and this time it's much deeper in. So again, the computer works out that hey, I still need to slide it that distance in order to pull it out. So this is still an intersection. Now, what if we have uh, this scenario? <laughs> now, it's no longer from an English point of view the intersection, but mathematically, th these two are different because uh, there is no longer the uh, definition of the shortest distance you pull one shape of, out of another to prevent the intersection. Now, there are all sorts of possible interpretations. Do I pull it out this way? Do I cut it? Do I void it? Do I pull it out the other way? You know, what's meaningful to a human about this? Do I really want to get this distance? Is that meaningful to me? Probably not. I would argue that the most meaningful distance is actually this one. 
here, that thickness. I want to say that this is something interacting with that shape by that distance. And the word I've come up with is piercing. So this shape is piercing that shape by this distance. So that is known as a pierce relationship, a piercing clash. And so here you can see a piercing clash of apparently five millimeters. Five millimeters. And we, we still need work. You can see some of these are a little bit suspect and there's no way to mark it as ignore yet. We're still improving the way it detects things, but that's an, uh, one example. Mm -hmm. Here's a protrusion, six millimeters. And as I scroll down, I'll get bigger and bigger ones. So here we have a protrusion of 15 millimeters. So we have the stove going into the thing. Uh, one thing, wouldn't it be possible also to have some options to be able to modify the text format? I would like to have it larger or a different color or something like that. Wouldn't it be possible to add this in the UI or something like that? Or It's all possible. Yeah. It just hasn't happened Takes yet. time. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So if we take a look at this one. Uh, let's see, maybe a top-down view. There you go. You can see this guy is protruding in 18 millimeters over there. So in theory, I just need to take that piece and shift him out. Of course, it's tricky mathematically because we know that this is attached to that piece. In theory, you know, maybe the whole this whole thing needs to move in. And so who knows, mm -hmm. you know? The mm -hmm. computer will never know. We just got to do our mm -hmm. best. So here we have another two objects kind of protruding into one another. Yeah. No, okay, it's fine. It makes sense. Uh, intersection is good enough now. And if you want to add another file, we add it in group two, in group B, right? If you want to Correct. pick one Correct. file against another. Yeah. One. If if you only have a group A, then it assumes to self collide within group A. Okay. If you have a group B, then it will compare A versus B. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, amazing. Let's run the other one. Uh, not intersection. If you go in and click instead of intersection, the collision. Well, you know what collision is already. Yeah, right. so um, now it will show you everything that we already saw as collisions in intersection check? Yes. Ah, okay, so now it will just isolate these ones. What it will also do is it will rename any intersections as a collision as well, because in theory, this is also a collision. It's both a collision and an intersection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still feel that there is a bit of overlap between these two things. And there are. Since we are since we are using separated check for intersection and collision, wouldn't it make sense to have them completely separate and don't see collisions in when running intersection and the other way around? Well, no. Okay, so you have three types of checks. You have clearance, which is mm -hmm. yeah, by itself. We have collisions. And then within that, we have intersection and then within that we have piercing uh, i have to double check exactly how piercing is, is working but something like that mm -hmm. right everything needs to collide before it can intersect everything yeah. needs to intersect at least once before it can pierce yeah because a pierce is multiple intersections in one end and out the other mm -hmm. so yeah. the reason we distinguish between them is it, it's not so much this diagram it's more of an optimization issue like if I just care whether something touches it, like that's it, right? It's just a clearance zone. That's something like that. That's all I care about. Then literally it's just collision, just collision detection I care about. And that's super fast for a computer to check. You know, I can put in huge models and it will check instantly. Mm -hmm. uh, if I start need to, because it's always zero, I don't need to do like weird length measurements or anything like that. The moment I start needing to measure a length, then I'm in this zone and it becomes a, a slower. And I need to start prioritizing. Is this inside or outside? You know, there's a lot more math involved in this. Mm -hmm. So All I right. guess for most clash detection, you want to do intersection tests. And yes, it might be nice to turn off collisions. Uh, depending on how much 2D and 3D stuff you have. We don't know how you've modeled things. Like maybe all your entourage is 2D and that's why it's coming up as collisions. Or maybe your duct linings are 2D, but it's still important to capture those collisions because duct linings are important or who knows, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, some duct linings are in 2D. Yeah, makes sense. All right. Thank you very much. Clearance is the slowest. So that's why it's its own thing because mm -hmm. you need to measure everything everywhere <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no but that's very good uh, now i understand the reasoning behind this because yeah it was not there and i'm sure more people could find this useful actually okay and there are definitely issues with how we detect mm -hmm. 
-hmm. these collisions, so intersections and pierces, there are problems. You know, over time you get better and better at it. Mm -hmm. This is the first pass. Yeah, like definitely. This, like it's just so you see the two points here. What this represents, it means there's one collision here and one collision here. This line does not mean there's a distance. It simply means there are two points at which it has collided. And this, I would say, is a bug we need to fix, to be honest, because yeah. you can see this allowed touching. Mm -hmm. I think I need to select that and that will remove it. Uh, remove it. Yeah. So this is what is called a, a touching collision which means yeah. that the distance of zero, they're just touching one another. But what if I want to allow that and I am only interested, like if I have two triangles, if one triangle, like just that point touches the triangle, then I don't really care. But if I have two triangles and this triangle you know, mm -hmm. it actually goes through it. Um, is, is that diagram making sense? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I should. Uh, uh, back. Yeah. So it goes through like that. Uh, that's that's what I really care about for a collision. So I, I think I can allow touching, which should get me less result. Oh, yeah, more results. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe allow touching means that yeah, they can just touch. Yeah, I forget how, which way around it is. Clearly, it's the other way around. So, mm -hmm. I, I would say that's a bug. Like, I shouldn't shouldn't be seeing that result, in my opinion. You know, this one this one's good. See, it's actually going through it. Uh, yeah. This is a a true non touching collision. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you quickly one thing. Who do you think should use this? Who is this feature of Blender Beam useful? And what people should expect from the development of these aspects in Blender Beam? Anybody doing clash detection should use this. I would say that the most stable one is clearance, because the math is very straightforward, right? Is there a distance between A and B that is within a certain threshold? And that one, the results are correct. You know, you can rely on it and go for it. So that's very easy if you want to do things like, does anything come within X of my pipe? or my pipe insulation. So definitely start using that now. Then collision, I would say needs a bit of work, but if you don't care about touching, like you just want to see, is there any point where these two models are, you know, touch or close to one another, then I would say collision is also ready to go. Yeah, it's good to go. So use cases might be, uh, if you have a safety zone, does anything at all interact within the safety zone? Like go for it. So clearance, uh, equipment clearance areas or intersection, I think can work, but clearly our results need a little bit more polish. We still get some false positives and possibly some false negatives too. Not, we'll have to double check. It's a first pass. So the more people test it and give feedback on good collisions and bad collisions, the more we can have more samples to mm -hmm. um, yeah, improve it over time. Okay, great.